The foundation of European influence on the territory of Louisiana was shared by the French with the Spanish. The territory was ping-ponged back and forth between French and Spanish control throughout the late 1700s. I'm going to make my rounds. Bye, Grandpapa. Remember, a Spaniard, Hernando de Soto, discovered the Mississippi River, and the first settlement in Louisiana, Natchitoches, was controlled by the Spanish when the Frenchman Saint Denis arrived. Now, Saint Denis was an entrepreneur who developed a good relationship with the Spaniards who already occupied the area, which bordered on what is now Texas. He also had the good sense to marry the granddaughter of the Spanish general who controlled the territory. My grandfather is the Spanish general who controls the entire territory. Oh, I did not know that, but uh, I will not hold it against you. <laughs> will you marry me? <gasps> oh. He then established Fort Jean-Baptiste in Natchitoches and became a wealthy man in what became the crossroads of the El Camino Real. The Road of the Kings, as it was known, extended across Tejas into Mexico. This was the route traveled by Davy Crockett and Jim Bowie to reach their fate at the Alamo. It will surprise many Texans to know that this historical landmark, Los Adias, near Robeline, Louisiana, stood as the capital of Tejas for 40 years before Texas statehood. Uno, dos, one, two, tres, cuatro. The Spanish influenced our 20th century music, too. The lead singer of that group, Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs, was actually Domingo Samudio, who had a Tex-Mex band in Leesville. The band played regularly on the border until the release of Wooly Bully, which was supposedly the name of his cat. It became a huge national hit. Now, Spanish influence later moved westward from New Orleans to parishes like Assumption and Ascension. There you'll travel through towns named Galvez and Gonzales and meet families named Martinez, Diaz, Severio, Hidalgo, Uso, and Falcon. Even more notable is the Spanish influence in Iberia Parish. Spain sits on the Iberian Peninsula, thus the parish name. They very soon began speaking French uh, because they were outnumbered by French speakers and intermarried with the local population. And so you have a lot of, uh, even today, a lot of people with Spanish last names that can be traced back to 1779. Romero, D'Artes, Miguez, uh, Segura. And yet, you know, since at least the early 19th century and until the mid 20th century, their primary language was French but the surnames persist to the, to the present. While under Spanish control from 1766 to 1803, Louisiana prospered, in particular New Orleans. The French Quarter burned twice during this period. The French Quarter was restored as we see it today, and there's little French about it. It is Spanish in design. The wrought iron flat roofs and colors are reminiscent of Havana, Cuba, in Quito, Ecuador. The great Louisiana novelist James Lee Burke perhaps best described New Orleans in his book, The Tin Roof Blowdown, when he said, traditional New Orleans is like a piece of South America that had been sawed off of its moorings and blown by trade winds across the Caribbean till it affixed itself to the southern rim of the United States. Well, we're making our way to perhaps the most historically significant plot of land in the city, Jackson Square, Place de Arms. The absolute historical and psychological heart of New Orleans, and everyone knows it, and probably one of the best preserved, most symmetrical plaza ensembles uh, in the nation. If you feel like you might be in France or Spain or Latin America as you arrive here, and it is spectacular. The Spaniard Don Andres Almanaster is considered the true developer of New Orleans. He built the first public school, the Charity Hospital, and St. Louis Cathedral, among other structures. 
It's his daughter, however, the Baroness Pontalba, who made the biggest mark. She designed and built the first apartment houses in America. The Pontalba apartments flanked the St. Louis Cathedral, the Cabildo, and the Presbyter. And Baroness Pontalba probably was at the forefront of a trend of the circa 1850 that has since come become iconic for the French Quarter, and that is the spectacular cast iron balconies, as opposed to the more modest wrought iron balconies that you saw previously, and make much more elegant shapes and scrolls. And if you look carefully, of course, you could see the uh, initials of the Almanasta and Pontalba families there. And at the same time, the prior St. Louis Church, now cathedral, was largely disassembled except for the first 30 feet of the front wall and rebuilt in the form that you see today. And eventually, the statue for Andrew Jackson was placed and it was renamed Jackson Square. What you're really seeing here is a very inspired, woman-led transformation of circa 1850. Nowhere in Louisiana, however, is the Spanish influence more clearly celebrated than in St. Bernard Parish which was settled by Canary Islanders known as Islanos. They're familiar.